This past Sunday, Virgin Galactic owner and area billionaire Sir Richard Branson lifted off from his company's space launch facilities in the New Mexico desert aboard Spaceship 2 Unity. In the following hours, he and his crew flew a history-making trip that saw them skim the Earth's atmosphere at 50 miles up. But did the newly minted Space Baron actually make it into the great expanse beyond the planet's atmosphere? Well, it depends on which international regulatory agency you ask. Now, when we get right down to it, or up if you're exiting the gravity well, the Earth's atmosphere extends much farther away from the surface of the planet than what we see depicted in popular media. Closest to sea level, you've got the troposphere. That extends up to a height of 12 kilometers, around seven and a half miles, although it is slightly shorter at the poles than it is at the equator. This layer holds all of the breathable oxygen and 99% of the available water vapor on the planet. And that's a good thing since pretty much all life on Earth lives down there. Above that, at heights between 12 and 50 kilometers, that's seven and a half to 31 miles, you enter the stratosphere. This is where the ozone layer exists, acting as a cosmic sunscreen against the deadly UV rays that our sun continually pumps out. At a height of between 50 and 80 kilometers, 31 and 50 miles, there's the mesosphere. With an average temperature of negative 85 degrees Fahrenheit, it's the coldest area of the Earth's atmospheric system, yet still contains enough water vapor to occasionally generate noctilution clouds. It is largely a dead zone, however, a brief span of 30 kilometers that's too high for planes to fly, but too low for satellites to orbit. Beyond the mesosphere is the thermosphere between the altitudes of 80 and 700 kilometers, that's 50 and 440 miles. This is where the ISS lives, but technically not the edge of our atmosphere. The exosphere actually extends from 700 kilometers out to 10,000 kilometers, it's about 6,200 miles above the sea level. Granted, there is nearly nothing out there. Atmospheric particles are so few and far between that they can travel thousands of miles through this region without ever interacting with one another. The aurora borealis occurs in the exosphere's lowest reaches, and a vast majority of Earth's satellite network orbits within this range. But the higher you go, the thinner the atmosphere gets until solar winds exert sufficient force to blow the molecules away into open space. So how could Branson have made his way to the edge of space at a height of just 50 miles when the atmosphere itself extends more than a thousand times further? Well, thank 20th century Hungarian-American mathematician, aerospace engineer, and co-founder of NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, Theodore von Karman. Right at the border between the thermosphere and the mesosphere, at an altitude of about 50 miles, the air thins out enough that aerodynamic control surfaces stop working. That means you gotta turn on your rockets if you wanna steer the craft. Just above that is the Kármán line, an imaginary border that roughly denotes what we consider the edge of space where aircraft begin to slip from the grasp of Earth's gravitational pull. According to the FAI, anyone traveling beyond that 100 kilometer high boundary can officially call themselves an astronaut. For the Federal Aviation Administration, the U.S. Air Force, the NOAA, that line starts at 50 miles up, in part because if they adopted the higher demarcation line, a number of pioneering aerospace explorers like John Glenn would lose their coveted astronaut designations. For NASA Mission Control, on the other hand, space starts at an altitude of 76 miles as that is the point where atmospheric drag becomes noticeable. So no, there are no hard and fast rules as to where space actually starts. Many of the designations we have today are based as much on international politics and horse trading as they are on the scientific method. But if you're rich enough, and Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk all certainly are, the rules of space travel can prove just as flexible as America's tax codes.